So we completed our full residential slash commercial project. And a few things I'd like to do to upgrade this thing to a more of a higher level of commercial project is put in a mechanical equipment schedule. <laughs> If we jump back into the power plan, we will see how we present the mechanical equipment right now. In our out of the box quick method, we just put in some equipment connections like this little guy, a little fan. We gave it a text tag with no smarts, and then we circuited it. And each one of these is just called fan. And that works in a small project. Uh, the circuiting is shown here. This one shows that it goes to the lights. We have an exterior condensing unit circuiting shown here. In actual commercial work, a lot of firms like to go a little further with this kind of connection and give more details. We may want to put how many horsepower is this piece of equipment? What voltage is it actually at? What's the maximum overcurrent protection required? What size feeder should it have if it's larger than like a number 12? So those kind of details we will often put in a separate schedule. Now in Revit, you could just create a schedule with a drafting view, like we did our single line, one line diagram. And some people may do that at first. That's a fairly quick method. We can just draw some lines and put in some values and put in all the information. But to truly use Revit's built-in database-driven model where things are centrally stored and you can show them in different places, I would like to show how we can create a mechanical equipment schedule using the data contained within your model. So the first thing I wanna do is actually show you how to start a schedule. Now we did this already in one of the previous lessons on how to do a lighting schedule. Up under here, if you go to view and you go over here to schedules, we're going to be doing another type of quantity schedule. So we hit schedule. We can pick what category of devices or equipment or whatever we would like to be in this schedule. So in this one, we're going to be bringing in the electrical devices. The me our mechanical equipment is actually an electrical fixture. It's called in Revit, like an electrical device, like a receptacle. It is just an equipment connection. So we just need to find our electrical fixtures right here. And it's gonna be by default called electrical fixture schedule. We wanna call this me mechanical equipment schedule. And there's different kinds of schedules. Some people will even do a transformer schedule or if we do a large commercial kitchen, we will have a kitchen equipment schedule. This one is specifically for mechanical equipment, which ends up being mechanical and often plumbing. But that's what we're going to call this, and the phase we keep is new construction. We don't have different phases in this project. So there's the bare bones of our schedule. In this schedule, as a review, we have the fields, which are the columns, and the fields that are available within our electrical fixtures are just parameters that are within our electrical fixtures that are the type of parameters we can schedule. So we have all kinds of things in here. What do we want in this schedule? So the first thing that I will actually want to show is the type mark. The type mark will be the name of the piece of equipment. Like we did in our lighting schedule, we have a name. So right now I see nothing and I see a lot of nothing. Look at all those rows. So our type mark is empty. Let's go in and look at the type mark for our mechanical. We're gonna start with this furnace. So we click on this and we actually gave this its own type. We called it a furnace because we have a few different pieces of equipment. We have a bath fan, condensing unit, a furnace, a laundry fan, and then this was just the out of the box. So we do have separate types. If you go into edit type, the type mark is down here like we did in our light fixtures where we give the type its own name or mark number. We can call this furnace and a lot of times the mechanical designers will give a mark number like F1 for furnace one or HP1 for heat pump one, and they'll number them and give them things like that. So we don't have that design in this project, but we're just gonna call this a F1 for furnace one and make up a mark number. So if we do that, let's take a look at our schedule now. Well, now we have a bunch of blanks and then we have an F1. Well, what's going on with all these blanks? Well, remember, we are showing every single electrical fixture in this project. So a lot of them are blank. We need to put that into more. Let's go into our bath fan. It is actually a bath fan. So we can edit that type 
and put a mark number in for that. Now, a lot of times a bath fan may be an exhaust fan, so it may have an EF. And we'll just say in this case, we're going to call it BF1 for bath fan. And we have one size of bath fan that ends up being the 100 VA load. So now we have a bath fan, and let's see if those come up. Well, there's one, there's F1. Oh, here's some bath fans, and there's a number of those. Furthermore, let's see what else we have. We have a laundry fan, and does this have a separate type? It does laundry fan, so we will call this one an LF1. And again, this is a small example that you can apply to actually larger projects. So now we have LF1, and it should show up in here somewhere. There it is. And then we have our condensing unit outside, and let's make sure we get a type mark for the condensing unit. So he gets CU1, condensing unit one. And now we're starting to see all of our equipment line up, but we have all this other stuff. Well, the other stuff ends up being the receptacles. For example, if I go into this receptacle and put in just a type mark just for fun, let's call it a receptacle, you will see that pops up for most of them. And then there's other pieces of equipment, other things that are here probably are floor boxes. Any other piece of electrical fixture shows up in this list. By the way, if you're getting some value out of this video, I'd sure appreciate you hitting that thumbs up like button down below. And if you want to see more electrical only future videos, please hit the subscribe button. Thanks a lot. I appreciate you. So the next field that I like to show is a description to explain what this F1 means. So let's go down and see, we do have a description parameter in our fixture. So let's bring that over into our schedule. And we can change the order of these if we wanna swap them up and down, but this looks good to me now, and say okay. Now we have yet another column. And so we can go into our pieces of equipment now and start typing in a description. So we go to edit, it's a type parameter. So go to edit type, and down here you'll find description. So here, this is called a furnace, and we can just type that. I use all caps for my schedule. Furnace. Okay. Well, so I have to go down and find every single piece of equipment now and do that. Now, because we have a schedule, we have a shortcut. The data is bidirectional. It comes from the database, but it also will feed the database so that it can populate all of the different instances we have put in. So if we go down to what we actually want description for, this guy here, bath fan. We can type it right here. So we are typing in the description parameter. And you'll see this change will be applied to all elements of this type bath fan. So we are changing type parameters. Now all of them fill in because they are all the same type. So here's a shortcut. You can do it right here in this schedule. And I'll say right now that schedules aren't just for dragging onto a sheet for, for printing, for production. You can use schedules behind the scenes for a lot of different reasons, which I'll, I'll be showing in future videos. So this is the laundry fan. And yes, it's a type parameter that we're changing. And then this guy is the condensing unit. And that changes there. So now we are able to get to all of our pieces of equipment. So let's see what else we want to show. I would like to show the electrical information. And again, instead of just typing this into like an Excel spreadsheet or just a text box, we're going to extract it from our model. So let's go into our fields. And we have electrical data as a parameter within our fixtures. Bring that over and let's see what we get. And we can stretch these columns out and narrow them down as we like. So what we're seeing here, the way this electrical data is set up in this project is voltage and phase or poles and then the actual apparent load in, in VA. We can see we have a variety of equipment. Now this guy here must have been like the cooktop and this one here looks like it might be the in the wall oven. And we're not scheduling these because these are not mechanical equipment, these are kitchen equipment. And we could provide a separate schedule for that if we needed, but this is a small kitchen. But here's our furnace and here is our bath fans and laundry fan and condensing unit. And so here's the data we have. So that's good, we have electrical data. What else should we show in this schedule? Well, I wanna show the panel and circuit. I want that all in this schedule. So let's see what we have for that. 
Let's go over here and look down in our list. And down here, there's panel. Drag that in. And then we also up here have separately circuit number. Drag that in or bring that in. And let's see how that looks. So there we go. We have panel and circuit number. So that's neatly shown in this schedule. Circuit 10 for there. Now our bath fans do not all have their circuit. And this is also a good way to double check to make sure things are circuited. You can also use the system browser. So we will have to go back and address those. But we have our panel and circuit now. Another column I like to add is a feeder column. Now, if you look in here, you'll see there is no feeder column. And Revit does have some built-in wire sizing and conduit sizing, but I don't rely on that. I don't find it super reliable. The way they use their voltage drop, for example, isn't completely accurate, to be frank. If there's multiple items connected to a circuit, they'll put all of the load on the furthest away device and calculate from there, which inflates the wire size. And anyway, long story short, you'll find other videos like about that on YouTube. And I don't use that personally, so I just do my own. But I don't have a field for feeder in here, so I need to use something else. And I can just use something I'm not going to put in this schedule, and that's something like manufacture. And what I can do is repurpose that. For example, under manufacture, I can just change this heading to be feeder. And then we just use a shortcut for a feeder referring to a feeder schedule. For example, a 20 amp feeder would be a 20 2 for 20 amp two wire feeder. And then this would refer to a separate feeder schedule that lists all the conduits and wire sizes and grounds and all that for this type of mark. So that's how we do it. Some people will come in here and actually start typing in the actual, you know, half inch conduit with two number 12, et cetera. And we don't do it that way. We find it can be error prone. So we just use this feeder tag method. But that's the feeder. And then the final one, I like to include a comments column if I need to just say something special about this equipment. Sometimes an indoor fan coil unit is powered from the outdoor unit. And so I like to put things like that. So we can add one more column. We can use a field that's built in called comments. And that works for that. And that can even just be notes, comments, whatever you want. And then I don't need the feeder in there and get rid of that. So that is the basics of this schedule. How can we sort this out and arrange this so that we only show our equipment? Well, this is the method we use. Within a schedule, you have this filter. Now filters are used throughout Revit. It's a, one of their major features of Revit is that you set up a standard and then you apply filters to it to delete things that you don't want to see. It's kind of like exceptions in the code book. So we're going to filter things and so we can show only what we want. Now, what are we going to filter by? So this shows you we can filter by any of the parameters that we have in. We're going to need to really add another parameter that we can filter these by. So what can we do? Let's go into our fields and find a field that we can filter by. Now, what we have determined is one of these parameters that we don't really use is called type comments. And you can use any of these others that work. So we're going to use type comments and we're going to pump that clear up to the top as the first field. We can say, okay, it shows up here and there are no type comments yet. But what we're going to do with that is apply a filter to the type comments. So filter by type comments. And we're going to be looking for what I call a flag or an indicator in each of these pieces of equipment that indicates that we do want it to show up in this mechanical equipment schedule. We need to have some kind of a flag that we can put in. You can use anything you want, like equipment, or we can put a mechanical, any kind of flag. So for example, let's try mechanical. That indicates we want it in the mechanical schedule. And so if the type comma equals mechanical, then we show it. This is just saying we're going to show it if the type comma equals mechanical. That's the only way we're going to show things. So if you hit that, now we have nothing showing. Well, because none of our fixtures or equipment has that parameter in it. They don't have that flag. So for example, let's go down to this furnace. Back to the furnace, edit the type. In this type comments field, we need to put MECH. Simple as that. Apply that. Go back to your schedule. Now it shows up. So we just need to do that for each of our pieces of equipment. We can just go back and turn off this filter. 
and just take this to none so we're not filtering so now we see everything but now we can get in here and put this mechanical in all the equipment we want without having to find it on our plan and we can just type m-e-c-h once we start typing it there's a drop down yes it's a type parameter so there it does that and this here we can go down and find it and yes and then the condensing unit go find it yes so now we have the mech for mechanical equipment schedule in all of our equipment now we can go back and go ahead and apply our filter so type comments equals mech okay and voila we have just our equipment showing and finally we don't really need this type comment to show up this is just being used as a filter so we can hide it while still being applied so we can go down to formatting and under type comments we can change its heading, we can change some of the orientation, but we can also make it a hidden field right there. And now it doesn't show, but it's still being used to filter our content. And then we can go in and assign the rest of these circuits. Now we can't do here. We actually have to use the circuiting tool within the floor plan to do that. Same with circuit. And the same with the loads, we can't change that. So not everything is bi-directional here, but a lot of it is. And then when we take this and drag this onto our sheet, we created sheets down here. Maybe you want to put this on the one line diagram sheet. We can take our mechanical equipment schedule and I like to bump these up to capital. And I like to drag those onto a sheet and that guy can just go over here somewhere. And even in here, you can adjust the formatting to fit the font that you have. And you can go through and you can change a lot of these fonts and equipment. If you go into the appearance, um, you can change grid lines and there's outlines and, and you can do a lot of things to spruce this up. And that's a personal preference. And here's all the text. You can have schedule default. You can change this to other kinds of text. So you can spruce up your schedule to make it look nice. But this is the basics that I wanted to show you of how to create a mechanical equipment schedule and have it filter out the fixtures you don't need. Now for a bonus feature, because we've gone through the work of adding this type mark to each piece of equipment, we might as well use that type mark for a smart tag instead of this dumb text. So let's get rid of this dumb text. So now we're gonna put a smart tag. So what do we have for tags? Let's see if we go up to tag by category, we end up with just a panel. When we looked before in the insert load out of this family, we could not find the proper tag. So we're going to have to create our own. So we're going to edit a tag. Now editing a tag is a family editing procedure, which is very basic. So it's a good one to learn on. So let's go into this tag. And right now it is called electrical device panel tag. Let's go to edit family. And it jumps us into the family editor. And every time I jump in here, I try to explain that it's kind of like a little miniature project. You know, you have all your views in a project browser and you have properties in the properties, just like a project, but you have other things you can do. Now, because this is an annotative tag, if you go up here to the top with this little yellow folder button, family categories and parameters, you can see that this is set up as an electrical fixture tag. So it's a type of family. So that's why you have a limited set of tools up here. It's just kind of an annotative family. But right now, if you click on this, you'll see it's a tag label. And we can edit what's in this label. We're over here under edit. Right now, it is set up to show the panel. But we don't want to show the panel. So this is kind of like, kind of like our schedule. So we bring parameters from the left and bring them into the right. So we can bring this one out. And in here, we want the type mark which is how we are labeling our equipment. So the type mark and a sample value, I like to put something like, just as an example, to show people what we're doing is EF1. And say, okay. And then I kind of like a special symbol around this mark to indicate that it's a mechanical equipment tag. I mean, you can go with a box around it, but I like to draw a little bit of a graphic. So what you can do is under create, simply go to your line tool up here, hit line, and you have pretty much just one line type unless we start adding more, but this should be fine. And we can create some kind of a rectangle around it. 
and give yourself some room for a larger. And what we find out is we can't see that. So we have visibility issues in the family editor as well. So we need to fix that. So as you'll see, there's no VG over here to hit. We have to go up to view and then find visibility graphics here. So under visibility graphics, under annotation categories, show annotation categories in this view. We want to show the annotation categories. So there we go. You know, we have an errant line, but the lines were turned off in that view. But we can arrange these to kind of look how we want and then this is just a box. Now, if I want to create some kind of a different shape, I can go back up to create and draw some more lines. Maybe I want to do something to get, let's see, there's the end. I'll do something like this just to give me some guiding lines. Get rid of that one and get rid of this one. I'm just creating a different symbol and I can mirror this. So I can grab this and grab this and then go my mirror by drawing an axis and this will let me snap to the center point if I go down there and it mirrored that for me to the right so now I have a special box around my mark number around my mechanical tag so you can do whatever you want as far as shapes on that and then I'm going to save this as its own family so I'm going to save it in my folder here as instead of electrical device panel tag we're going to call this i like to put a customize in front of it a, a tag to show that it's a custom tag so electrical fixture type mark tag explain what it is we only need one of those as a backup we've saved it now and now we can load it into our project and close now we have a tag. So now let's go down to the first floor power plan and change this tag. We've already got a tag here, so we can click on it and up top right, we can drop it down to the new one. And here's our customized electrical fixture type mark. And now you can see that we get the nice symbol that we drew. Now we can edit this further with an arrow if we like. So if we go to that edit type, Right here, leader arrowhead, none. Well, we can put in a leader. I like a fill 15 degree. That puts an arrowhead. The arrowhead is pointing to the attachment. If you click on here, you can see a little box. That's the actual electrical connection point. And it's pointing to that. Well, I don't want it pointing there. I want it to point at something else. So I will unattach the end. See how it says leader type attached end? We can do a free end. Apply that. Now I have a grip on the arrow so I can move this and then I can, I can do something like this if I like and make it look a little better. So now I can do that with all of my equipment instead of this dumb text that's not associated with the family. And as I change the name of the family, my, my tag would also change. For example, if I was to change the fixture type to, let's say I want this to be furnished too, you can see that it automatically changes to F2 and vice versa. If I want to change this back to F1, I can do it at the tag level. I'm still changing a type parameter. So by changing the tag, I'm also changing the type. Now it's back to F1. So that's, again, that's one of the true powers of Revit is that association back and forth. So let's use it as much as we can. So let's do a tag and get to the bath fan one. We can unattach the end and make it more to our liking and you can put this where you like and we can do that with the laundry tag so we can just go through the rest of the project and tag all of these with an actual smart tag and you're on your way to having a smarter Revit BIM type model with the information actually being reflected in your tags. Mm -hmm.